Hey everyone, welcome to this Q&A call, this live call that is sort of, as I mentioned, like office hours, office hours uh, with Coach Solvay. Uh, I, I'm smiling and laughing because I think as most of you know, I teach at the university and I also have office hours with my students as Professor Solvay. So um, here we are, here we are for this office hours Q&A time. And as of right now, I'm the only one here and that's sort of like office hours go a lot of times. But I know that a few of you have DM'd me and said that you wanted to, you wanted to be here, but you couldn't be here and you were going to catch the replay. Um, and so I want to go ahead and record something anyway. And I know some people might join in as they're able to on their schedule. So if uh, if we pivot at some point and someone shows up or a couple of you show up and you want to talk, I am so here for that. And in the meantime, I'm just going to record a few thoughts for you, for anyone who is thinking about manifesting right now or thinking about Come Alive, the program, the group coaching program that is starting next week, I want to share with you a few thoughts and hopefully answer some of the questions that some of you had as you are thinking about manifesting, but also specifically thinking about this program. So one of the things that one of you asked me about was to talk a little bit more just about the program in general, the Come Alive program. So a couple of things to start off, I'll just say that some of you may have joined me in this program before. Some of you may have heard of this program before because it's one I've offered quite a bit. I also have it as a standalone online course. So you can always do this program throughout the year as a self-study and that opportunity is available to you on my website. So that's something, or you can always DM me if you're not wanting to join in the group coaching cohort, but you do want to explore the material at some point. So just know that. And what I do is usually just once a year, I run a group coaching cohort of this program and that is an opportunity for you to study with me. So the way it is to be then in a, a live program, right? Like as if you're taking a live course or well, you are taking a live course, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you're doing it alongside me instead of just doing it as a self-study on your own. And I think there's a lot of reasons, a lot of great reasons for that. A lot of us learn better when we are able to engage and interact with the material. And there's also a lot of extra inspiration and motivation and energy that comes through doing this in community, doing this exploration, <coughs> excuse me, in community. So that's part of why I run it in this way once a year. Also, if you've been following along with my work, this is the first month of Sovereign Goddess Summer. So if some of you were interested in Sovereign Goddess Summer but didn't sign up, you may notice that this, this curriculum is the same work we were going to do in Sovereign, we were, we are doing in Sovereign Goddess Summer, I should say. And so if you are like, oh, I'm not ready for the full summer five-month program right now, but I would love to explore my potency and explore possibilities and bring that positive energy to creating what I want to create in my life. This, this four week intensive, this four week group coaching intensive is something you should consider or I would encourage you to consider. So I just wanted to connect those dots for anyone that's like, I feel like I just heard about this in Sovereign Goddess Summer. Yes, yes, you did, because we are we are doing, we have Sovereign Goddess Summer people, and we also have those of you who are joining for Come Alive. I like to be able to connect programs when I can, and so that's what you're seeing here. So with Come Alive, it is uh, four weeks of curriculum. And what that means, if you don't know that fancy term, is that there's four weeks of trainings. And those trainings are pre-recorded, so you will receive those trainings on Mondays at the beginning of the week. They're all about an hour long. Um, i got to double check that in terms of the time. I think they're about an hour long. And they are going through the manifesting practices. There's also worksheets to go along with each of those weekly trainings and journal prompts to support you as well. 
So we'll be going through the steps of manifesting as I teach them, as I understand them. And you'll have those trainings to study during the four weeks and also to return to if you ever like, what was that first step again? How do I do this? <laughs> I've shared with you the the ways that you can and, and manifesting isn't necessarily a step one, step two, step three process, but you can learn it in that way to begin with so that you can understand where you're at in the practice practice, what it is that you're working on and have more context for what it is that you're doing when you are manifesting or deliberately creating. So like I said, there's four weeks of trainings and these worksheets that go along with it, encouragement to take action and journal as well to explore the inner work of each of these weeks and then, and the practices within. And then there's also a weekly group coaching call on Thursdays. It's just a 60 minute call. So it's something you could do perhaps on your lunch break or, you know, whenever, if you, if you um, need to, it's at 12 PM Alaska time, 1 PM Pacific, 4 PM Eastern. And so we'll have these four weekly group coaching calls. That's a time where you can bring questions that you have about the material Things that you're thinking about personally in terms of what you're trying to manifest throughout this month that you can bring and get coaching support around as well. And there's also just something really inspiring about being with others who are working on manifesting as well and learning how to manifest and then practicing it. I just love those conversations. And so that is what we'll be doing on those Thursdays. And then there'll also be a Telegram group chat for those of you who have used the app Telegram before we have a private chat. So you can share things that you're thinking about. I'll be there for coaching in between the group coaching calls. So if anything comes up for you, or if there's something I want to add in, I often just share inspiration and thoughts in the, in the Telegram chat for you as well. But it's another place to receive support from me in between the group coaching calls. So there's a lot of support built into this four week intensive, and it's also a really beautiful way for you to, you know, begin your springtime feeling if you're ready to feel more alive in your life. The idea of come alive is that you are connecting in with your intuition. You are listening to those intuitive nudges, and you are also really giving yourself permission to desire, permission to desire and to want what it is that you want and to start to develop this sort of neutral, unapologetic energy around these things that are what you want in your life and start moving towards creating those things in your life. So in the first weeks, it will just talk you through basically the manifesting practices that we we explore. And you can see this if you look at any of the program information too. But in the first week, we look at the idea of choosing a desire that you want to work on throughout these month, you know, throughout the four weeks together. So you'll choose one to two really like desires that you'd like to work on in this month, right? Whether it, whatever it is that you're wanting. So we'll clarify a desire, we'll clarify your focus, and we'll also talk about the importance of faith and understanding what feelings you desire to feel as you are moving forward with seeking to manifest. So the first week is really around focus and faith, um, as well as those feelings. And then from there, we will look at releasing limiting beliefs, because that's another really important part of the practice, how we release our fear, release our limiting beliefs and keep returning back to returning back to love. We'll talk about how we embody our desires as well, how we embody them now. We talked about this yesterday in the masterclass, shifting the internal before the external changes. So we'll talk about the embodiment of your feelings that you want to, that you want to feel in the future, practicing feeling them now. We'll talk about the practice of surrender and trust and why that's so important to just decide that this is for you, that you are worthy of this desire and that you can trust and sort of lean back. This is that lean back energy. You sometimes hear me talking about lean back energy of surrendering. And again, we'll talk more about those things. We'll then talk about aligned and inspired actions and why the alignment and inspiration in those actions is so, so important. And then from there, we'll talk about the practices of patience and celebration, the gratitude that we bring to our practice and how that deeply, deeply supports the flow of manifesting. 
So just that's like a, that's like a quick overview of what it is that we'll be talking about within these four weeks. Of course, we'll go into more depth in the program and you'll also be supported along the way with each of those things. Right. So um, that is generally the journey of the Come Alive program. And of course, if you have questions and you couldn't make it today live, you're also, of course, always welcome to email me or DM me on Instagram. Those are usually the two easiest places to find me. And and you can talk about it. We begin April 10th. So next Monday with that program and it's a month long. So I'm so excited for those of you who are interested to join me. I also mentioned that I would share a little bit about things that I've manifested and things that I have seen clients manifest as well. So I, there's, there's so many things that I could speak to. And I feel like I've used uh, and shared with you a lot of examples before of things that I have manifested in the past, but I want to, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and then I'm going to think about what feels like I want to share today. Hmm. Maybe I'll share about my house because that feels like one, a story I haven't told lately. Some of you have heard this story before, but I've been studying manifesting for quite a while now. I remember hearing the term manifesting. I just want to give you this background for those of you who haven't heard this before. I remember hearing about manifesting since my twenties and like kind of hearing these vague sorts of ideas about like, just imagine you're a millionaire and act and live like a millionaire and then you'll become a millionaire. And Um, some of you know me more than others, but I was sort of like, that doesn't make a lot of logical sense to me. It sounds like a really good way to go into debt. I don't really know what to think about that. And so while I thought it was like a fun, magical idea, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. But I will say that as I went through my twenties and into my thirties, people I really respected around me were talking about manifesting and I would hear the term in conversation. And I was like, okay, well, It sounded kind of silly to me to begin with, but I will say that these people that I love and respect are talking about this and I trust them. So maybe I should learn more. So I started reading some books on manifesting. And as I started reading books, I thought, "Hmm, this is like, this is a pretty cool practice, but it still felt, I don't know. It felt, I didn't really feel like I understood it fully, I guess. So I remember, I think it was in 2016 or 2017, I wrote in my, I always have like, what do I want to learn next? Like I make notes for myself. And one of the things that I wrote was I want to learn more about manifesting. And sure enough, I manifested a teacher, uh, you know, the ma- magic of setting intentions and holding space. While I didn't really fully know I was manifesting at that point, I manifested a teacher who um, was really well-versed in manifesting practices and I respected and I wanted to learn from, like I was aligned with their values. I wanted, I wanted to learn from them. And so even that was its own journey because at first I didn't have the money to invest in that program. And I had talked with the, with the coach and the teacher about it. And I said, I really want to study and that I really want to study this with you. Um, but it was like way more than by the way, the come alive program is, it was like an eight that I think it was like $8,000 to study with her. And, uh, also I really wanted to do this and I'm used to investing in my personal growth, but I didn't have $8,000 at the time and I wasn't willing to go into debt for it. There have been other things, by the way, that I was willing to go into debt for, but at this point I didn't want to go into debt for this. I wanted to be able to pay for it. And so I remember talking with her, this is, I'll get to the house, but I want to, I just want to tell you this because it's coming through. So I remember talking with her and being like, I'd really like to study with you, um, I don't have the money right now to do that, but I hope to. And she said to me something that was pivotal in my understanding of manifesting. She just said, you just have to decide. And I remember being like, "Mm, is this some sort of sales tactic? Like, I don't love it, but I know that I trust her. So I'm willing to like, I'm willing to listen to what she's saying. And she said, you just, you really just have to decide that you want to do this. And again, she wasn't being this firmer, like (laughs) she was really nice about it, but she was like, do you want to do this? Do you want to learn this? And I said, well, yes. And she said, okay, stop there. Like, don't, don't tell me like, but all the reasons that you can't just, just settle into the yes, you want to do this. And she said, notice that you have decided that you want to do this. And I was like, okay, admittedly, I'm a bit of a skeptic, right? So I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. 
okay. Uh, you know, my brain was like actively like, but I don't understand. I don't have the money for this. So thank you for this suggestion, but I don't understand. But she was like, I, I hear, I can see that you have like objections to this, but like, just see if you can be with that. Yes. That yes, you've decided that you want to be here. And I was like, okay. And she said something like, let me know in a month, like, let me know in a month if you, if you, if you want to, you know, start this work together. Um, but she really encouraged me that the powerful thing was that I had made this decision to say yes to this. And so I hung up the phone with her and I was like, okay, cool. Like I did say, I want to study this. Uh, I guess I'll just be like curious about the possibility that $8,000 could show up for me. But admittedly, I was still a bit skeptical. <laughs> And, uh, and I went about my life and I was like thinking on this thing and like, okay, like I need to tell her if I'm going to do this study with her or not and thinking about it and thinking about it and like holding the energy of, okay, she said to just decide. And I decided, yes, I want to do this. And what happened next was really like miraculous for my life, which is that I won't go into the whole story, but I got called in by my supervisor to say that something had gotten messed up in my contract. There was something messed up in my, I won't go into the whole detail of it, basically something had gotten messed up through my contract at the university and I was owed some money for the mistake based on the union contract. And I was really confused because this was not something I did not, I was not aware that there was anything messed up in my contract. I did not know this was happening, but I wasn't aware at all. And so we're having this conversation and she's like, so I just, you know, I want to let you know that you're going to see a chunk of money show up in your bank account. And this is where it's coming from. Like, there's going to be a direct deposit. Um, you'll get the documentation about this, but it was something like $7,800 or something like that. And she was like, so here's the amount, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And I just was like smiling the whole time. Cause I, 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 I really couldn't believe <laughs> it was pretty hard for me to believe that this was happening. But also it was happening. It was real. And indeed, I received this deposit of money into my bank account. And with that money, I was able to pay for the program that I wanted to pay for with this coach. So that doesn't happen to me every day. I'm not saying that those kinds of things happen in that exact way all the time. That was one particular moment where I was like, okay, I think I need to learn more about manifesting because, because she just said I needed to decide and I had decided and sure enough, this happened. Right. So, um, yeah, maybe that was the story I wanted to tell. I guess I'll just tell you briefly that when it came to my home, I had told myself that I wanted to, I, I was ready to buy a home. I had been renting for a very long time. I had been renting and I loved my rent. Well, not all of them, but my my most recent rental was amazing. Like it was a great situation for me, but there were some things that were starting to not uh, be totally aligned with where I would be like being there and like the rental as it was like, look, as I looked towards the future. And so I had decided maybe I, maybe I want to look to buy. And I had done that a few years back and I had gotten pre-approved for a mortgage and it just like, wasn't enough for me to be able to buy anything that I was interested in. And so I had given up at the, you know, at that moment, whatever this was a couple of years back and then, um, you know, just continued to rent and that was okay. But around the time that I was thinking like, maybe it's time to buy one of my friends told me they were selling their house. And this seemed like an ideal situation for me. I loved her house. <laughs> I was like, and she was like, I would love if you could buy it. And so I was like, yeah, me too. And I have no idea if I can afford it, but let's go ahead and go through the process. So I went through the process of getting pre-approved for a mortgage again, and I got approved for more than I had been approved for, um, you know, a few years before. And that was really cool and exciting, but it was like not nearly enough to buy my friend's house. So I like kind of had to give up on that particular thing at the time because it was just like, you know, my, <laughs> my manifesting so far hasn't been to manifest like 200,000 more dollars. I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet in terms of my practice. So I was like, okay, I think I need to release that. And then right around that time, the pandemic hit. And so I was home a lot in my apartment and of course, going on walks with Luna, my dog around my neighborhood. And I remember at the time going on walks and thinking, okay, well, I can't, I legitimately cannot afford right now to buy that house that I wanted to. But as I started going on these walks, I thought, well, I really love my neighborhood. If I 
could buy a house here, that would be so awesome. But I also live in like a pretty nice neighborhood with pretty big houses that are mostly out of my price range. So this also is a hypothetical. I was like, well, I'm just going to keep walking around and thinking about like, if there's a house here that I would like, and um, I'll, cu- I'll cut this story short because I feel like I've been talking a lot about manifesting stories, but I will say that walking around the neighborhood, walking around the neighborhood. And one day I was driving home and I drove past this little house that I'm in now, spoiler alert, I found a house. Um, I drove past this little house that I'm in now and it was a very small house. And I all of a sudden realized that it had a for sale sign on it. And I had, I think I had a realtor at the time. I think I was looking at a few different houses. So I called my realtor, but houses in other neighborhoods, I called my realtor and I was like, oh my gosh, uh, can we just check out this house? (laughs) Let's go learn about it. And when we learned about it, it turned out that it was in my price range. There had somebody else, there'd been somebody else who had been, their offer had been accepted, but then something happened and they pulled out of it. And so I was the next person on the list and everything went through and I ended up getting this house. I'll just make that shorter, but (laughs) I love the house that I'm in. I love it so much. It's in the neighborhood that I love. It has so many things that are wonderful about it. There's like a Creek on the property, um, at the edge of the property, there's this really rad cabin that I'm hoping to restore in, in the future, in this, in this property, there's woods outside. I get to look right outside of trees. Um, there's so many, it's such like a perfect size for me. Like it's within my price range. Like in this moment, I'm like, thank goodness I didn't get approved for that other house because, I would have had to always have housemates and like, it would have been pretty stressful financially. So this house is like super small and cute and within my price range. And it's so joyful. It's so joyful to be here. And I definitely feel like I was holding the energy for a long time, really of, I would like to have a home. And then as that, as that energy got clearer, right. As my desire got clearer, I was like, okay, like I want it to be within my price range. I want it to be a monthly payment I can afford. I want it to be ideally in this neighborhood, although I don't see a lot of possibilities in this neighborhood of things I can't afford, but I wanted to have trees on my property. You know, there were many things that I was like, these are the things I really, really want. And then it showed up. It showed up and it totally worked. And, you know, please note, I am a single person. Um, you know, a lot of people, I remember feeling like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I need to have a dual income to be able to afford something. Like there were so many feelings that I had of like, maybe this isn't for me. And it is for me and I'm here and I've been here two years and I'm so happy here. Right. So um, those are two stories. They're kind of long. So I hope you enjoyed them of my experiences with like, clarifying a desire. And I didn't talk you through the whole manifesting process with them, but things that I was actively manifesting that came to fruition that I saw come to fruition. And so I just want to say also, I am a person who seeks to be conscious in my life as best I can. I'm also aware of my positionality, like where the intersection of my identities. And I think it's important to say, like, I am a highly educated white cis hetero woman (laughs) moving through this world. Like there are a lot of places where I experience privilege. And so as I'm sharing things, I don't want to, like, I want to share that I acknowledge those privileges. And I think they're important to think about when we're talking about manifesting. Um, because those things do impact us in our lives, right? In some way or another, the intersections of our identities. And so I want to name that because I think that's important to think about that. Like we do live in this reality where some people experience more privilege than others. And to overlook that when we're talking about manifesting feels um, not right. (laughs) So I want to name that. I want to name those things. But that being said, you know, I've been working on these principles now. And because I found them so impactful in my life, I was like, as after I had studied with the teacher, I mentioned for, I think two years, we studied, I studied with her for two years. I started thinking like, I would, I would like to teach these principles as well. I would like to share this beyond what, you know, I would like to share what I know. I feel like this is really important and transformational for people, which is how 
I developed Come Alive. That was how I developed the Come Alive curriculum was through studies with my teacher, Chelsea Rose, and also, of course, all the other reading and learning I'd been doing because I'm kind of a geek and I love learning about things when I get excited about them. So I'd done a lot of learning beyond, you know, what I had learned with her as well. So I put together this curriculum, the what is now Come Alive, and started offering it. And I also use those manifesting principles with my private coaching clients, when my mastermind and in Sovereign Goddess Summer, like there's some version of these. So as I mentioned, and, and a few things I've said, come alive is like a really great entry point. So if you're interested in working with me, if you want to understand some of my methodology and the way I approach change, one thing to know is that I really value manifesting. And I think it's a really interesting way to approach how we want to create change in our lives and come alive is a great place to start learning that. So if you've been thinking like, Ooh, I think I want to do sovereign goddess summer, or I think I want to do the luminous leaders mastermind, or gosh, I'd love to work with soul Vay sometime. This is a really great place to start because you're learning all those basic foundational principles. Then we build on those in these other programs I offer. So I just want to name that too. And I have seen people manifest all kinds of things in supporting them in this, whether it is a new apartment that is like, has the most amazing view in Chicago. <laughs> One of my clients manifested, I think I've shared that story in here in the past, um, whether it's that, and then that client then decided they wanted to have a different sort of housing situation and then manifested another really beautiful, amazing um, condo in a different area of Chicago. That was just like such a cool process to watch her powerful co-creating. Um, whether it is, a lot of my clients have been moving, it turns out, uh, whether it is uh, moving to a new city because you have found this new love in your life, but you're moving your family like you, like one of my clients is, um, was divorced and had fallen in love with this person and moved with her two children to a new town and wanted to be in a space where she was really like trusting herself and also building a beautiful loving relationship that was moving towards like cohabitation and engagement with this person she was with. And, um, and I'm just like celebrating with her because this is all like, this is a person I'm working with now who these things are all happening for her. She just got engaged. She has just bought a house in like with this person. And, you know, of course there's always ups and downs. Like we all have ups and downs in our lives, but overall it's really, really beautiful. And I watched her manifest this, like she has helped and supported her, not only watched her, but supported her to hold the energy of these things being possible, which I think is difficult sometimes when you have had frustrating situations in your past to, to not self-sabotage, to not, you know, let fear hold you back from beginning something new. And she's so courageous in what she's doing. And it's super amazing to watch, you know, whether it's leaving a job, I've had, um, clients who have manifested leaving a job for some other opportunity that was better for them, getting a promotion in a job that they're in that was really important to them. And whether it is starting a business or growing a business, earning more money, bringing in more money in one's life, manifesting love, uh, manifesting more health in one's life. Like there's a lot of different directions, right? Depending on your desires and what it is that you want. Um, stepping into more leadership. These are all ways where we can use manifesting practices. And I just have example after example of little things and huge things that folks have manifested uh, uh, as a result of our studies together. So I know I'm talking a lot here. I wanted to share those things with you. Um, I want to share with you too, that I'm currently manifesting. Like these practices are ones, the practices I teach you and come alive are the things that I use still. They are powerful in our work that we use as we are trying to create change in our lives. If that's what we desire change in our lives or change in our communities. We can apply it to both. But personally, I think some of you have heard that I am in a relationship with someone who, that I, that I feel like I manifested with someone. I've had an international lover turned boyfriend who is in Dublin, Ireland, and we have been trying to figure out ways that work for both of us. You know, we're both established professionals working in our lives and have our homes and 
also, we want to spend more time together. Excuse me. And so I am currently manifesting, creating a really amazing opportunity for us to spend time together this summer. And a lot of the pieces are already falling into place. And I am just trusting as I hold the energy and continue to work through my fears and continue to work through my limiting beliefs and hold the energy of like, this is possible for us to find a way to be together, whether it's here in Alaska or in Ireland or somewhere else that I don't even know yet. (laughs) And in a way that feels really aligned for both of us, right? This is like what I am manifesting is how can we, and, and he is manifesting this with me, you know, how can we do this in a way that feels so, so good to both of us. And, and there's so much more I could say about that. And just like how I'm manifesting that in my life right now. But I want to say like, those are big moves for me. Those are big changes. However, they end up looking, I'm still like the plan, you know, the things could change, but the plan right now is for me to be in Ireland this summer and be there and working from Ireland and living together for the summer. And I'm so, so excited about that. I'm so, so excited about that. And also uh, there are elements of, and the pieces and parts of this that are still falling into place, right? Like that are still falling into place and that I am manifesting to be able to have enough money to be able to do this in a way that feels really, really good for me in a way to be able to, to have care for my dog and cat while I'm gone in a way that makes, you know, they're just a lot, lots of pieces and parts that I am holding the energy of this is possible. This is totally possible. Is it something everybody does now? Like it's, of course it's not. Is it something everybody wants? No, it's not at all but it's what I am excited about. And it's what I'm interested in manifesting in my life. And so, you know, I'm going for it. (laughs) I'm going for it and I'm, and we'll see what happens. Like, yeah, I'll keep you posted along the way, but I, I can tell you already pieces and parts and just like beautiful synchronicities have happened. I recently have been practicing with manifesting in just, you know, different ways. And there've been some beautiful, synchronicities and things that feel like miracles that are happening around me to like bring this into my life in a way that feels good. And as you know, if you've been around me for a while, I always say this or something better. So this is what I'm holding the energy for right now. This is what I'm hoping for in my life. And also I know that I live in a loving universe and a loving in a loving world. And I trust in that I am connected to something bigger than me that may have something even better in mind that I am not seeing yet. So it's always holding that both and of like, this is what I desire in this moment. This is what I see. And also we hold things with, we hold things loosely as best we can. This is not necessarily easy, but we hold things loosely so that maybe there's something even better. Maybe there's something I can't even see yet. And that's what I'll be coaching and supporting you with too, is like, here is the thing and how do we hold it loosely? So we're open to the magic of life and we're open to what else is possible. And I find this to be a really beautiful way to live my life. It honors my faith in love and my faith in possibilities. And it also brings me alive because it's always like, I'm always in the adventure of it, I suppose. And when I use these practices in my life and I personally really like adventures. So if you do too, you might really enjoy this. Okay. I'm just resting with, if there's anything else that needs to be shared today. I think I just want to say that if you've been listening to me this long (laughs) and you find yourself thinking, I have things I want to manifest in my life. I have things I want to deliberately create in my life. And you like the vibe of learning from me, right? Because it is important to appreciate the coach or the teacher that you're learning from, right? I'm trying to give you a sense of like, usually I don't talk this much, except for when you're listening to a training, then you would listen to me talk for a long time. I'm trying to just give you the vibe of like, what is it like to be in a program with me? And if you feel the sense of this is for me right now, my intuition is saying, this is something I want to learn. This is a way I want to grow. 
If you're feeling like I want to trust my intuition more, I want to feel more alive in my life. I want to understand that potency that I have, that power that I have to create change in my life, to create change and to co-create and be open to the magic of things. If you like thinking about things from a place of choosing love over fear and continuing to return to what is possible and you want to be coached and supported in those ways, right? Like this is also about me supporting you and feeling held through a program. So it's not just you studying on your own, but it is having someone to be a witness and coach for you to help you to keep going in something. If all of that feels like, oh my goodness, this, this is what I need right now. This is, this is my next step. Then I would encourage you in the same way my coach encouraged me years ago, which is just to decide, like, even if you're not sure the how yet of how this would work, um, what if you could trust that the decision is the most important thing? the decision to say yes or no to something, right? So it's also possible that you're listening and you're like, yes, I am listening. And my decision is no, this isn't what I want to do next. If that's the case, then you get to trust that too, right? Like there are, there's something really powerful in tuning into your body and feeling into the yes or no. If it's a no, then great. Thanks for hanging out with me. I love hanging out with you virtually and I'm grateful for your presence here, right? But if it's a yes, if it's a like, ooh, this is a yes for me, then try to try to not totally figure out the how yet. Like you don't have to know the how, just like I was sharing with you earlier. Like I, all of my objections and fears came up. Like, I don't know if I can make that call time. I don't know if I can do this, right? Like all of these things came up. Um, but I'm really glad personally that I made the decision to say, yes, I want to do this. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to convince you to, uh, you know, to, uh, I just want to be clear. I'm not trying to convince you of anything here. Like I, this is not a sales tactic, which is what I was really skeptical of. Like, is this just a sales tactic? Like that is not my intention with this. What my intention is, is for you to notice decision in your life and where you have decisions and let it be possible for you to just decide like, yes, this is for me. And yes, I am worthy of this or no, that's not for me right now. Right. Those are, those are empowered decisions that we get to make in our lives and we make them in all kinds of ways. So just trusting yourself around decisions that you make and not getting so caught up in the how that you stop yourself from something that you do truly want. Um, it's a lot of what we do in manifesting. You know, I just was sharing with you. I don't know how about everything about my Ireland summer situation. Like there are things I can't tell you how it's going to work yet, but I trust that if this is for me, which it feels like it is, which in this moment, it feels like it is. I trust that it's all working out. Okay. So I hope you can feel that energy with me. I hope if you're manifesting things that this energy supports you in deliberately creating what will bring you alive in this world, what your desires are. And I'll wrap up there. Thank you so much for joining me for this office hours Q&A chat about manifesting and come alive. I'm really glad you are here. I'm really glad you're listening to the replay. Reach out if you have any questions and I will hopefully see you in one way or another soon. Okay, bye.